Well, welcome to the channel. You're Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist, Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. It's very cold here today. In our last study of Proverbs 22, we found out that the only way to go with a narcissist is to ultimately throw them out and for you to disappear. That way you get away from the flying monkeys and their constant disaster and reign of terror. And you bring it to an end by being generous enough to offer the narcissist the blessing of knowing how they're truly behaving. No more mockery and fighting goes on. The quarrels and the insults, the passive-aggressive behavior disappears when you throw out the troublemaker. Verse 11 of 22. Whoever loves a pure heart and gracious speech will have the king as a friend. If we go to Matthew chapter 5, Jesus at the Beatitudes said God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him for the kingdom of heaven is theirs God blesses those who mourn for they will be com comforted God blesses those who are humble for they will inherit the whole earth God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. And God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they shall see God. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called children of God, and, God, and working for peace is about resolve. This is the trouble that the narcissist has. And God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, <clears throat> he who loves a pure heart and gracious lips will have the king for a friend. A pure heart speaks with somebody who wants to oppose mockery, conflict, quarrelling and insults. They want this stuff to cease. And unfortunately, when it comes to the sinful nature and how it works and wants to behave, it sows injustice into everything and it's constantly in disaster. That's why it wants to mock, cause conflict, quarreling and insults, even if it's in the passive-aggressive realm. See, a lot of this can happen in silence. You have to have discernment to be able to tell what's happening here in a lot of cases. The pure heart speaks of somebody who wants to walk in love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, patience, gentleness, and self-control. That's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. And I've had beautiful, wonderful girlfriends that have come to me and said, this is how I want to live. And yet for some strange reason, there's been an intrusion come into the relationship and their desires and their sinful nature and their passions have allowed triangulation, interference, 
flying monk conceited flying monkeys to provoke one another and to be jealous of me in their lives and the love and the joy and the peace the patience and the kindness and the goodness the faithfulness gentleness and self-control just became latent it was there it was all there but the provoking and the conceitedness and the jealousness of the people in the background wore away at my partner's heart. And while I belonged to Christ and nailed all my passions and desires of the sinful nature to the cross and crucified and left them there through him and lived in the spirit, and was following the Spirit's leading in every part of my life. And they could see this. They became conceited and provoked by family members and jealous. <clears throat> and the purity of the, the origin of the relationship began to slip. And you can have gracious lips. Remember, gracious lips are the lips that are generous enough to share with the poor the bread of life, the problems that need to be fixed. See, the narcissist doesn't want to face scrutiny, self-scrutiny or self-introspection. The narcissist wants to have a cigarette or a drink, some drugs and medications. They end up making a mockery of and conflict of things that were really fixable, quite fixable. They slipped out of the, the love and the joy and the peace. And these people have said to me, we want peace and kindness and goodness, but for some strange reason in the background, the impurity and the lustful pleasures and idolatry and sorcery. See, a lot of these people get taken away by their habits. <coughs> <coughs> their sorcery, which is smoking, their drunkenness, their need for toxicity, their sexual recklessness and desires, their lustful pleasures. Of course, out of that comes anger, jealousy, dissension, selfish ambition, Division. And when you have a pure heart and you want what's best for everyone and you're confronted in the spirit by mockery, conflict, quarreling and insults, The only way you can help the situation, the only way you can help the king in your relationship for you guys to be friends, for you and your partner to live as king and queen, is to have the grace enough To offer the person that's causing the trouble bread or be yourself the bread of life and confront the poor behavior. But no matter how gracious your lips are, how open and transparent your heart is, sometimes and usually, as you learn knowledge about personality disorders and the sinful nature, it 
the slacker always says, the narcissist always thinks that there's a lion outside. Is that a lion that I'm dealing with here? Is that a little lion chewing on his toy? I might have to deal with that lion later, viewers. And I take him for his work. The daughter. Oh, just interestingly, just by the way, as we come in to land, just while you think about the paranoid schizophrenia of the narcissist as they look at themselves, introspect. There is a lion outside. I will be slain in the streets when there isn't one there at all. My daughter's a detective and there was a man killed on a motorbike yesterday northern Sydney he was run down by a drug addict person that had too much drugs hit the man on the motorbike tried to flee the scene with the man and the motorbike under the car and dragged the guy for 200 meters under the car killed ended drugs Stay away from drugs and alcohol. That man lost his life for no good reason. When you confront your partner, you've got to understand that they're living in a realm of paranoia. They have low self-esteem. They're frightened to be of being abandoned, even though their behavior is leading that for that to happen. The narcissist will say, there's a lion outside and I'll be slain in the streets. They don't do anything. They don't resolve the issue. And this is how complex the sinful nature and things are. You can come and have a pure heart and gracious lips. Please, can we just look at this or fix this? And they'll be frozen. The narcissist will just be frozen. They don't bring resolve. They frustrate things that are in front of them that are capable of being fixed. They annul your knowledge. And their words become frustrating because they're faithless. The mockery and conflict and quarrelling and insults add up. And they just freeze. Everything gets frozen when it comes around to resolve with the sinful nature and the personality disorders. Things freeze. Nothing gets resolved. They just say and portray that there is a lion outside and that they'll be slain in the streets. They can become paranoid delusional. And this can happen with family members. They become paranoid delusional of your presence when you bring in the light to the relationship. It's just all slackness drive out the mocker and conflict will depart even quarreling and insults will cease because the Holy Spirit produces the kind of fruit in our lives that bring love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control. There is no law against these things. And these things are for those who belong to Christ. I'm Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist. Thank you for joining me. And bye for now.